The launch of the RTX 5080 and 5090 is over, and many are not happy. How could NVIDIA have botched this launch so bad? Let's get into it. The launch of the 5080 and 5090 was a huge disappointment, and because of such a poor launch, the reaction against NVIDIA has been very negative. I don't understand why NVIDIA would hype up their fan base only to then not supply them with the GPUs on launch day. Retailers like Micro Center even started a countdown timer weeks ahead of the launch. And with that hype, there were people who were waiting in line overnight at Micro Centers around the U.S. People camped out in cold weather hoping to score a 5090 only to find out there was almost no stock available. And even the few that were able to get one paid significantly higher than the price Jensen gave at CES. And at online e-tailers, many outlets reported the new GPUs sold out instantly. I even tried to score a Founders Edition at Best Buy, and while I was put in line, it eventually came back as sold out. The whole experience just brought back flashbacks from the GPU crypto mining boom days. Nobody wants that experience. So why did it fail? Was the demand huge, or was the supply very small, and if so, why? The demand for the new generation of RTX 50 series has been building for months. Reports of NVIDIA stopping production of the 4090 surfaced in September of last year, and by October, they were gone everywhere. The 4080 Super quickly followed a month later. So this has been building for several months, and that created an initial high level of excitement and several months worth of launch demand. The other part of it is the supply. It wasn't that the supply was bad, it was practically non-existent. Considering that you have customers that have not been able to purchase your high-end GPUs for months, several months, it's not hard to calculate how many GPUs that would be needed for launch day. Rumors surfaced from AIBs and system integrators a week before that there would be serious shortages. And then two days before, NVIDIA published a short statement that stockouts may happen. Really? Stockouts? Not shortages? NVIDIA would not let them say shortages because the implication is NVIDIA is responsible and they are the cause of shortages. This was a huge shortage. For reference, just over two years ago when the 4080 and 4090 launched, Within the first month, we saw the combined sales of 160,000 units. However, for every 4080 sold, NVIDIA sold four 4090s. That's right, the 4090 outsold the 4080 four to one. We have nowhere near that amount this generation. While we don't have total volumes yet, there are several retailers around the world who stated they had practically no stock for this huge launch. One retailer in the U.S., Micro Center, showed very small numbers allocated to its stores. They had less than 3,000 units total. There were less than 2,450 80s and less than 240 5090s. NVIDIA made 10 times as many 5080s than 5090s, a reverse of two years ago. Between Newegg, Best Buy, and Micro Center, you had something likely on the order of low tens of thousands here. And in other countries, they didn't get that much. The total for this worldwide launch was a fraction of what we saw with the 4090 launch. And the big question is, why? Some people have suggested that NVIDIA is intentionally creating the scarcity, maybe to drive up the hype and the prices. Let's start with the prices. Fake. The 999 for the 5080 is a fake MSRP, sure. They'll make a few batches of Founder Edition GPUs and they'll force each of the AIBs to make a small batch at $9.99. That will be enough so that they can't get sued. However, the largest majority of the GPUs are centering around $1,200. That was the launch price of the 4080 two years ago when nobody bought it. So it would appear that Jensen is once again trying to get people to pay $1,200 for his 80 series GPU. Second, let's talk about the hype. When GPUs are scarce, it creates a weird mentality in people. There's actually a psychology behind this, and that is the scarcity principle. When items are scarce, or even just perceived to be in short supply, the emotional part of the brain takes over. I know, I experienced this too, and it's important for you to understand why you too may go through this as well. When items are in short supply, it feeds your FOMO, your fear of missing out. And that FOMO monster just grows, and the more you hear shortages, the more you feel like you need to get that item. This is a very powerful principle used in marketing and used heavily in high pressure sales tactics. 
And once you are in that hyped up FOMO stage, then logic and reason leave. And when you go to purchase a 5080 for $999 and the only thing left is $1,200 or more, you find yourself buying it even though you know it's not a good deal at that price. That 20% in price just wiped away the 10% benefit for this generation. You find yourself just paying a lot more for a little more performance than last gen. Don't fall prey to this principle used by marketing teams. The secondary effect of this scarcity is that it trains the early adopters to overpay for their GPUs. So while we have talked about the effects of the scarcity, which is to get people to pay higher prices, did NVIDIA create this scarcity intentionally? Let's look at the facts. First, NVIDIA created this huge demand. Remember, NVIDIA stopped producing the 4080 and 4090 GPUs last year. That is several months of not being able to buy a high-end GPU from NVIDIA. Do you know how many people built a computer over the holidays and were just waiting for these GPUs to release? That's why you saw the 5080 sell out so fast. It's not because people don't care what reviewers say about the product, and it's not because they think the 5080 is such a great part. People have been waiting patiently for months at this point. They just wanted to complete their builds. Secondly, NVIDIA is not creating scarcity for the sake of scarcity. No, scarcity is a result of something that happened last year. And it was, as Jensen said, 100% NVIDIA's fault. In August of last year, it surfaced that Blackwell was having significant yield issues. And this caused delays in production of Blackwell chips for its major data center customers like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. And then in October of last year, Jensen confirmed that the yield issues were due to a design flaw in the Blackwell architecture itself. He said the problem was completely fixed. That was a two-month delay between reports, and it put them behind in their production ramp-up schedule. How would NVIDIA make up for that delay? Considering that the profits NVIDIA receives for its data center customers dwarfs the profits from gaming GPUs, it is easy to understand they would easily reallocate wafers initially targeted for gaming GPUs over to its data center customers. That leaves very few wafers for gaming GPUs. Remember, two years ago, 160,000, and at this time, we seem to have a fraction of that for the launch of Blackwell Gaming GPUs. NVIDIA knew this was going to be very, very bad. To recap, first NVIDIA creates the huge demand by stopping production of the 4080 and 4090 months ahead of time. And then second, because of the design flaw in the Blackwell architecture that caused a delay in production for their data center customers, they take the wafers away from the gaming GPUs and reallocate them, leaving gamers with practically no supply. I would argue that they should have delayed the launch until they did have sufficient volume. That behavior says that NVIDIA doesn't care about gamers anymore. You know who else doesn't care about their customers? Monopolies. And NVIDIA is as big a monopoly for gaming GPUs as there ever was. In a competitive market, NVIDIA would be bleeding sales to their competitors during this time. In a competitive market, AMD Radeon division would be selling GPUs at record levels. So ask yourself, why not? Jensen knows that Radeon is not a competitive threat to him. NVIDIA knows they are a monopoly, and their decision to not delay the launch just demonstrates that ever more. This means that in the foreseeable future, over the next several months, there will likely be continued scarcity for GPUs in the supply chain. There is a little bit of hope that it may not be as long. I mean, major customers are reporting to be cutting back orders, and that will help alleviate data center demand. Also, interest in DeepSeek AI may also further reduce the demand for Jensen's expensive AI products. For me, a 5080 at $999 would have been an okay upgrade from my 3090 that I bought used after the crypto mining boom. That same 5080 for $1,200 or more, that's just a no-go. The value is not there, at least for me. And if sales of the 5080 will be like that of the 4080, you can be sure NVIDIA will release a 5080 Super or a 5080 Ti, or maybe both. A 5080 Ti with 24 gigabytes would be sweet. And DLSS 4 will make that weight much more bearable. Amongst all the noise about the GPU shortages, the new features of DLSS 4 is giving my 3090 a free upgrade in performance. I've really been impressed with it. Like it if you learned something, share it, subscribe for more. If you like my deeper thoughts on this generation of GPUs, click on one of these. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.